Welcome back to Mass Appeal. It's almost Thanksgiving, but if you want to make your home look fantastic with a last minute fix, you can do it. You can make a cornucopia here to show us how to do it. We have the master gardener, the green thumb guru, Ed Sordiff. Thank you so much for stopping by today. Good to for be here. Braving the storm. So we're going to do a lot of things today. Yep. But one of the things we're going to do, the first thing, we're going to make a cornucopia. Yep. And a cornucopia is basically a harvest basket. So if you don't actually have, this is a classic shape of a cornucopia. It looks like a horn, and it's actually. Uh, it goes all the way back into classical mythology. Um, it was the horn of a, 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 a goat that nursed uh, Zeus when he was on earth and uh, the horn broke off and then Zeus gave the goat a present by making the horn always produce whatever the goat wanted or it's a, it's a horn of plenty. Any kind of foods, anything would come out of it and that's and, the actual history. And we always see them in you know the, the olden days, the Thanksgiving tables, they're always there and they're always filled with a bounty. So traditionally, what was the bounty they used to be filled with? Well, anything from the harvest. So whatever mm -hmm. you would have around um, uh, that time of year, corn, pumpkins are traditional, squashes, grapes, apples, things that we have up here. Uh, people put gourds in them because gourds actually last an awful long time. You can dry them and keep them from year to year. I have actually cabbage over there, which you could use. That's actually, we've talked about that before. That's an heirloom cabbage, mm -hmm. uh, late flat Dutch cabbage. It's a really nice cabbage, great for coleslaw, it's very creamy and is a great keeper. It can even freeze a few times and have no problem. So if people, but let's say they're on sale or something like that, or yeah. people buy them or have them in their garden, how do you keep them uh, going for a long time? At what temperature, all that good stuff? Uh, if you had a root cellar around 50, 55, that's ideal, a little bit cooler. Just as long as they don't freeze, that'd be great. Keep them out of the sun. Uh, the vegetable bin, they work really well in there too. But um, I've had these outside um, and they actually froze a couple times, but th they turned out really fine. You can see they're just as fresh. And if you use something like this and something like a cornucopia, all you'd have to do is when the, what's gonna happen is that the cabbage is gonna start um, drying out a little. Mm -hmm. So the outer leaves won't look so good. So then all you do is just peel your outer. Just peel it back. Yeah, and then you reveal fresh, nice Like an leaves. onion. Yeah, and it just, um, very healthy looking, stays a long time. And that's the really great thing about cornucopias or harvest baskets, is that you can use everything that's edible, things from your garden, if you grew pumpkins, gourds, um, squash, these are um, carnival squashes here, a very nice edible squash, you have that. right here. Yeah, the next little one you have there is a, um, a sweet dumpling, and that's a, a nice edible one too. So you can eat all this stuff after. The grapes you can have on a table, so you'd be eating it right during Thanksgiving. So that nothing goes to waste. That's very cool. Let's talk about some decorative popcorn. Some of this is edible, some of it's decorative. Yeah, the small popcorn in here is called strawberry popcorn. Um, actually, I got this at um, Hadley Garden Center. Uh, my friend Clivia works there, and oh. so um, shout out to her. That was really nice of her. She Thanks, gave us Clivia. some things. Um, this is popcorn. You you just pop it like you a normal popcorn once you took it off the cob there. So you take it off the cob and then you treat it just like good old-fashioned popcorn. Yeah, candles. that's that's in, that's because people usually have those poppers already, so that would work just like that. Perfect. Then you have Indian corn, which is we've all seen that it comes in various colors and sizes here. And this is more ornamental, is that right? Yeah, you could eat it, but like many things that they uh, like the kale down there that they actually. Um, uh, bread for ornament, it doesn't taste as good. So there's uh, uh, not as much sugar in here, and this has already gone by. It's it's dried out. So. And now, Ed, we're looking at the kale right now. That's a great plant. We a couple a couple weeks back, we did ornamental plants. Ornamental kale is something that uh, works great in these months. Yes, this is the last thing you can probably have that's fresh outside. Um, it, it, moms are probably already gone by if you haven't taken them in because they last down to the 30s. Uh, the kale will last down into the 20 degrees and it's, it's perfectly fine. All I've done, we had those terrible nights a couple weeks ago and last week I think it was down to 17 and lower. Oh yeah. I brought that into the, um, uh, into a, um, into the barn actually or if you have a garage you could put it in there. Just somewhere above freezing. Yeah and then it's perfectly fine and it pops right back up like that. I even have some of the kale at home that are larger that are actually putting out new growth already. Really? Yeah, because they're really that hardy. Just a really nice thing to have to welcome guests, and it really lasts a long time. Now, while I have you here, seeing as you are the green thumb guru, I do have a question for you. I have hydrangeas and other plants like that in the front of my home, mm -hmm. and I cut them back a while ago, but then we had that swell of warm days, and new growth started on it, and then the new growth has subsequently died. Should I cut that back again, or should I just let it be? I would just let it be. It's, and with hydrangeas, you don't always want to cut them in the fall, because if you do that, some of the hydrangeas will not bloom for you. So if you had a problem, um, uh -oh. With them not blooming, yeah. it was that type of hydrangea. Some will bloom on new wood and old wood, so it depends on the, the variety. But if, if yours aren't blo blooming, don't cut them back in the fall. Now, Ed, you have a great do-it-yourself project for us coming up a little bit later in the show. If you wouldn't mind telling us what we can expect. Okay. 
Um, well, I thought, you know, who knew how big this storm was going to be, how early it got here. Mm -hmm. I thought if you weren't able to get out today, you could have the cornucopia with stuff from the house. You could also build something from things in your yard. This is a, a turkey that all I did was use um, various things for the body here. And then there's various things you can use for the tail and the head, and we'll talk about that. And this is just moss I gathered. And just your firewood that you're having for the holidays now that's split makes a nice uh, uh, end point to that. Or you could put it in a basket. Well, so. I, I can't wait to see how to make it. We're back with Ed Sort of. He's the green thumb guru. We made a cornucopia earlier. It's right over here. And boy, it looks lovely. <laughs> but now we're going to make some uh, ornamental decorative tablescape ideas. Yep. I thought what we would do today is make a uh, table top turkey. Not the one you're going to eat, but one to look at. Let's hope not. No. And, and once again, I was thinking maybe you aren't going to be able to get out there in the snow, so you want to do something at home to uh, use for decorations. Um, and so everything you can actually gather from the house or the garden. Um, first of all, with a turkey, all you need is to do something to make a head. We'll talk about that. You can do it out of wood, stiff felt, cardboard, whatever you want. Um, and a wing, the body, and then the tail, of course. And so then it's really basic, but you really do have a, a simple turkey there. I can also imagine you could find templates online. I know you seem to, you've hand drawn one here. Yeah. But you can probably find templates online or you can do whatever you need. Yeah, just uh, do a search for uh, turkey uh, mm -hmm. uh, images and. Then if you don't want to do that, I actually did the simple one. You might remember this from art class. I was going to have you do it if we had time. You just basically make two ovals, one for the head and one for the neck and body, and then just connect the, um, the, the circles like that. So it's pretty simple. It gives you a, a template to follow. So that's really easy. Yeah, and then just a little beak and you got a bird. Well <laughs> done. So we do that and then I see you've used some, what kind of moss do we have? Uh, this is just moss I, I found on the side of the road. I really like the color. It was really bright, yeah. so I thought it would be a really great thing to put in there. You could also use straw if you prefer that, and then you can actually even garnish that with things like, uh, or not garnish, you're not going to eat it, but accessorize it with something like a, a chestnuts or something like that. You could probably uh, morph this into a Christmas item, too, if you'd like to. Sure, you now, could probably I, do lots of things. I imagine the, the, um, this won't last. Um, this will actually last as long as you keep it moist. You can put it outside and it'll be fine. The I moss mean, will? Yeah, the moss in the winter you can actually go out and you can find moss. You can just uh, dig it out and it's still pretty green and it'll thaw out nicely. So maybe once everybody leaves you can just throw it back outside. The cold doesn't affect it that much? No, no it's living out there right now. I just got this actually uh, yesterday on the side of the highway. How neat is that? <laughs> So yeah, it was really interesting, really uh, fun to do, to gather. And that's one of the nice things about these kind of projects. It gets you out a little bit. Maybe not so much today. It might have been better a little bit earlier. But, um, but you know, when everybody's snowed inside their house, it's a great thing to do when you go a little stir crazy. Get out yeah. and go exploring. Yeah, and then um, actually in the house, you can go down to the basement if you have old wood and stuff, and you can actually do something like this. Now, I used um, uh, a... Uh, hydrangea blossom here for the body, but you can do a lot of different things, and that's a nice thing, something natural in the middle. This is one huge hydrangea um, blossom, but you can also, I have over here, I have a smaller hydrangea at home. All the individual flowers are small. It's a nice brown, which would definitely work. Mm -hmm. If you don't want the flowers to fall off, just spray them with, uh, mist them with water, and that'll help hold them on a no little way, bit. No way, really? Yeah, so you can work with them. And then if you just were taking them and putting them together like this, you could actually create a body, and you would just actually stick that together you would use floral foam like this, which is in the bottom of the thing I have there. Mm -hmm. And that's what you actually will stick the pieces into. Now, what we did was we made the patterns like we talked about. Mm -hmm. You can use any kind of wood, a, a thin, thin wood like this. Mm -hmm. And then this one's actually made out of a thicker wood that we have here. And the jigsaw would work. Yeah, a, little, a hand jigsaw is perfect. And then all I did was we took the pattern. And you know how to transfer a pattern to wood once you draw it on paper? I have no idea. Okay, well you can either draw right on here or what you can do is you take your pencil and you would just um, you just go on the outlines a lot with the pencil and just really get a lot of graphite on there. And, oh, and then you can actually just turn it upside down on the wood once you have that and just rub it on and it'll transfer to the wood. And really? Then you so can you just need an excess amount of graphite on there and then yeah. it'll all transfer over? Yeah, and then you were able to get going. So then we did that. We actually drew just a turkey here, just like the ones we cut out. I actually added some details here. You can paint this and do whatever you want. I left that natural. Now here, this um, important thing on a turkey is of course the beak, the head, the eyes, but this is the waddle. And on a turkey, it comes from the top of the nose and it's actually called a snood. So, really? Yeah, so that's a little turkey trivia. So there's you. your snood right there. So if you want to uh, enlighten your guests this weekend, you can do that. Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> now, Ed, what else do you have for us? I see some cool things over here. Okay, this yep. is the finished product. That's just when we cut it out. Yeah, so then over here, so that you got that cut out, mm -hmm. you can do the same thing with the tail. 
of the body can be hydrangeas, it can be pumpkins, acorn squash would be really good. You uh, would put the head here and the tail here. That would look like a really great turkey body. Mm -hmm. So you can do whatever you want with that. Now also, for the tail, you don't have to just use wood. These are just those feathers you buy at a craft store, and they're just the picks. You can see you just pick them in. You can Look just at that. put them out, and that would become the tail. And then you'd put another thing here for the body, and then the head up here. And, and this, this piece of green again is called? Um, that's a, the dry oasis. It's not, it's not the wet oasis. So it's just flower foam, basically. So you can do whatever you want with that. Great ideas. Anything else for us? Um, da -da -dum, that was the body. Oh, the wing. The wings, because we can also use these, right? Yeah, that's actually a way of doing the tail. And actually, a good way to do that is um, you soak your corn, mm -hmm. and then you put it on a towel, press it out, and that'll give you that shape. And, and you can get more than that to make it nice and thick. As always, fantastic seeing you. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy, happy holidays. Happy Thanksgiving to you, season. too. Now,